Hey everybody, today we're gonna talk about binary search, a classic algorithm in computer science and something you may see on some whiteboarding interviews or at least variations of it. Usually the questions go something like this. As you can see on the, on the screen here, we have an array and they'll ask you to find a number inside the array and return the index of that number. And there's a lot of variations of binary search problems. Sometimes there'll be um, this array. Usually, the, classically, this is just a sorted array, a unique sorted array. But sometimes it won't be unique. You'll have duplicate values, and they might ask you to return the first or last value. Sometimes the array will be shifted, meaning that it's you might have an array that looks like this. It might be like 72, 105, 130, and then it starts back up at 2345 and you, they want you to find the value in it. So there's definitely a lot of variations of this. And there's also times where you'll have a solution and they'll want you to find a number in it and you'll have to use a binary search at some point. So there's a lot of ways of doing this. Now I've actually interviewed some people with binary search. So I've had some experience um, what a lot of people do when they are in interviews, when they get questions like this. And classically, what most people do when they get a binary search question, when they don't know it's a binary search, they do um, something like this. They'll go for var i equals zero, i is less than ar dot length, and then i plus plus, and then they go if ar sub i. And in this case, by the way, the array is the sorted array. In this case, it's unique. There's no duplicate values in it. And the value is the number you're we're searching for. And the return value, we want to return the index of the, the value we're looking for. So in this case, they'll go like, OK, well, let's search through the array. And if the array sub i equal equals the value, then we return the index. So I guess in this case, we can run it. You can see here, so it's looking for 45, so it should return. Remember, if you don't remember, these are all, it's based off of 0. So the first index is 0, and then it's yeah, I won't put this. This is 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're expected to return 2. So let's just run it. Node. Make sure I save it. And we'll comment that out so it doesn't give an error. And we'll run node. Let's run it again. All right, so we get two, as so we expect, zero, one, two. So it's returning back the, the second index, 45, which is correct. Now, of course, the problem being that if we have huge, large values, like millions of values, then at best, this is going to be log of, or O of n, not to jump ahead. So if you do, if you know a little bit of big, big O, this is there's two different types of complexities. There's space complexity and time complexity. So in this case, the time complexity would be O and N. So that means that in the worst case scenario, depending on how large this is, if there's a million values in your array, it could take a million times going through it to find the value. So it's as the array gets larger, you're going to have to look through every single value to find it, or almost every single value, depending on where it is in the array. So that's obviously the a naive approach to solve this problem. Of course, when I do interviews, that's the first thing everybody does is they assume that they just need to do this to fix it. So obviously there's a better way of doing this. So when I go through interviews, people, I would say two thirds of people have heard of binary search, but only one third really know how to do it right. And by the way, when I do interviews, I'm talking about, I've done some test interviews on a website called Pramp.com, and I've done quite a few on there just for fun to try to get into doing algorithms. 
and a lot of times that's where I, where I meet people. And, um, that Pramp website is where you have two people, you get to interview someone and someone gets to interview you and you get to test algorithm problems. And each one of you given, each one of you is given an algorithm problem. And one of the beginning algorithm problems is a binary search. And like I said, most people, only about one fourth of the people actually get it. Maybe one, another one fourth I have to help. And then about half the people don't, don't even get it at all. But that's why they're on the site so they can learn it. So the next thing that usually trips up people is I usually tell them, well, binary, if they do know a little bit about binary search, I said, well, maybe we can, it's kind of a divide and conquer type algorithm. So we, so let's delete this. And so what we want to think of is when we have this array here is that we know and the most important thing we know is that it's sorted and you can do this if it's descending or ascending, but just for simplicity's sake, we'll say here that it's ascending. So. You could take a look if you, you could actually take the middle value of this and then you can compare the values to the right and the left of it to figure out if you need uh, which part of the array you should look through. So in this example, we'll actually add an, ex an extra number to make it a little easier, we'll do 47. So the exact middle number would be 47. So we can detect the middle of the array, and then we can take a look at the number we're looking for, in this case 45, and we can check to say, okay, is 45 less than or greater than 47? So we know that 45 is less than 47. So the number we're looking for is 45. It's less than 47, which is the middle number, so that means we can ignore everything to the right of this number. And we can ignore 47 because it's not the number. And we can just focus on the left side of the array, which would be over here. So our new array would be like 1, 23, uh, 45. Because we know when we checked 47 that it wasn't 47. And since 47 is, is greater than 45, we know we have to look at the left side of the array. And then we can keep on doing this divide and conquer. Then we would look at 23, the middle value, and say, okay, well, is 45 less than 23? Um, no, 45 is greater than 23. So then we can get rid of the other side. So then we would just be left with 45. And then, well, well that's it. So we can do it. So that's way of doing binary search. I'll show you a graphic here that'll explain a little bit better. So in this, in this web page here, you can see here, this, there's this top here, this is a web page called pengy.com. So they have an array of numbers and each one have an, each index has a different one. And in this example, they're looking, there's the sequential search at the bottom, but this one, they're trying to look for 37. So they went to 23, they looked at the right subarray. And then they keep on dividing it over and over again, and then that's where they found it. So I'll go, it goes pretty quick, but you can see here, they're looking for the number 37, they check 23, they go and do another half, they find, they look at 41, and then they look at 10. So it's continuously dividing the array up and moving the start and end. So let's take a look here. Okay, since we saw the visualization there, let's see if we can actually get this working. So what we wanna do first is we're gonna create a start value and we're gonna create an end value. And the end value is gonna be array.length minus one. Since we know we're at a zero index here, kinda of see here from down here, we wanna get the last number in the array. So we know the array is actually seven values, but if we minus one, we get six, and that would be the index of the last value. So we want to make sure we do that. Now, very important here is we're going to do a while loop, and we're going to do start is less than or equal to end. And a lot of people get this mixed up. They don't know when to start and end. And what this is basically telling us is that we're going to go through, just like the example I did before, but we're going to keep moving the start and the end and keep shortening that array over and over again and we wanna make sure when they equal each other, start and end equals each other, that it doesn't go beyond that. So you can't have the start be beyond the end or the end beyond the start. So first we need to do is we're gonna create a middle index 
And a lot of people at this time also kind of get confused. They think you could just take the n divided by two. Well, that doesn't quite work because we're moving the start value. And we're not, we don't want to copy the array or anything like that. We want to leave, leave the array in place. So we can obviously, if the, the start value is on the second index, we obviously want to uh, take that into account before we find the middle. So there's two ways of finding the middle index. Uh, one one way you'll see in a lot of different websites, which works, but there could be a problem, is that they do high, in this case, start plus end divided by two. And what this does is it takes the start value, which maybe, maybe it's two, and the end value is six, it adds the two and divides by two, and you get four, and that'll give you the middle index, you can see here. However, in some languages and some typed languages where you have you have specific types like integers or floats or doubles, you can actually overflow your floater float or integer by doing this because if it's a really huge array and you're close to the limits, you can overflow the values. So a, a clever interviewer might point that out if you try to do it this way. The other way of doing it, which is a little less um, a little less easier to understand, but it still does the same exact thing, is you would take the high or end, you take the end and you minus the start and you divide that by two and then you add back in the start. So that does the exact same thing and this way you don't have to worry about overflowing your value, and so you could see from here, the old way would be, you take the start, you would take end plus start divided by two would be, let's say the end is 100 and start is, I don't know, 50. So you'd be like 100 plus 50 divided by two and that gets 75, because you know 150 divided by two is 75. The other way would be, you're taking the end, which is 100, you minus the start, which is 50, and then you're dividing by two, so that's 50 divided by two is 25, and then you're adding back in the start, which is 50, and that equals 75. So you get the exact same answer, you just don't have to worry about overflowing the values. So let me delete that. That's a little tangent there. So now we have the middle value, and so we know each time we go through the loop, we're gonna find the middle value, and then, so basically we just do need, need to do some comparison. So we can do if array at the middle index, and we'll do the base case first, equal, equal, equals the value we're searching for. Then at that time, we know we found it, so we'll just return, uh, let's not do that. We'll just return mid, which is the value. So then we're done. However, if we don't find it, then we can do some comparison. So we can do if array mid, let's say it's greater than the value. So in that case, let's say, the value was, the middle value is 47, but we're looking for 45. So 47 is greater than 45. We know we can move the end because we don't need anything over here in this right subarray. So then we can change what our end is. So our end equals n minus one. Actually, excuse me, mid minus one. That's another thing a lot of people do is they think they you just move it to the left, you keep moving to the left by one, but really we know, since we know the middle, in this case, if the number was 45, the middle, we would have to just move move it over one. So we're just gonna change the end. And then else, we know that in that case it must be less than, so I'm gonna get rid of these. In that case, we are gonna change the start and that's gonna be mid plus one. So in that case, we're moving to the right and we get rid of everything to the left. So that's pretty much it for binary search. Um, you can also have a case, like if it doesn't find it, it can just return, I don't know, negative one or some value. Obviously, um, you'd have to decide what you wanna do there. So let's give it a shot. So in this case, the same example we had before was 45. So if we run it, 
And it returns two, just like we expect. Zero, one, two, that's 45. So let's try 130. And we'll run it again. And it turns six. So that's the index, the last index, six. So we know it's working. We can do 72. It returns four, which is where that is. So you can see this is just really simple, a really simple binary search. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you like this video, click the subscribe button. Thanks.